Good morning. Let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Gonzalez with the city of Chula Vista. Absent. Chavez is absent. Donovan. Here. Montgomery Step. Here. Global. Global is absent. Um, Leba Gonzalez. Uh, Leba Gonzalez here. Dillard. Here. Mendoza. Here. Rodriguez. Well, here. Bush, but oh. here. <laughs> Thank you. Frank. Here. Moreno. He is absent. Ewa Rivera he is absent. Gloria is absent. Whipper? Here. Hall? Here. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes this morning. In addition to our regular agenda, the board has several closed session items. Uh, in order to do it all, we're going to have to move through our agenda efficiently. So for time management purposes, public comment today will be one minute per person during our public comment periods. Uh, we are also gonna waive item 31, which is chair, board member, and CEO report if the board is okay with that. Um, all right, let's begin with our non-agenda public comment. Uh, again, this provides one minute for anyone who would like to comment on something that is not on today's agenda, but is within the purview of MTS. Clerk, do we have any non-agenda public comment? Chair, before we do so, can we introduce um, the translation services that are provided today? Please. And I'll have our interpreters um, guide us through that. Para utilizar la función de interpretación, Vaya hasta la parte inferior de la pantalla de Zoom, donde se encuentran los controles de la reunión. Haga clic en el icono de interpretación, el globo, y seleccione inglés, con, español como su idioma. Si se une a través de aplicación móvil de Zoom, teléfono celular, tableta, presione los puntos suspensivos, luego presione interpretación y luego elige su idioma. Finalmente, haga clic a silenciar audio original para dejar de escuchar el audio de inglés. Los auriculares están disponibles para interpretación. Por favor, consulte al empleado en la entrada principal. Tenga en cuenta que los participantes deben unirse por computadora. La plataforma no admite esta función a través del teléfono. Thank you. Um, and we do have several public comments. Um, Luis Pruitt, please make your way to the podium. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody, and happy holidays. I'm going to make this very quick. I mean, I've talked about and don't mean beating a dead horse. And my big thing is about the um, the 901 out in Imperial Beach. If we can get a 901 Express, that would be really good. And that'd be if you can do it Monday through Friday, seven o'clock in the morning, twelve in the afternoon, and five in the afternoon. Seven and five is rush hours. Twelve is just to run. Instead of going through Coronado, it would go to Cesar Chavez, go to Expressway, go down Palm, go to, go all the way back to Iris, and then come back. The 901 would be good. To, that'd be a good start for um for the year, if anybody, you know, if anybody really look into it. And once again, happy holidays. Henry Agnew, please make your way to the podium. Good morning. At last month's board meeting, I was excited to hear about the possible trolley to airport connection, and it inspired me to create this map visualizing the extension as part of the trolley network. The full map is in the meeting packet on page 11. As you may know, the orange line currently terminates at Courthouse Station, so one possibility would be to extend the orange line westward to the airport using the westward route that Sandag proposed last month. This extension would give riders in El Cajon, La Mesa, Lemon Grove, 
and most of downtown a direct connection to the airport. No transfers required. For riders on the blue and green lines, they'd simply connect at, at Santa Fe Depot and here in 12th and Imperial like many commuters and riders already do. For arriving airport travelers, I believe that having the trolley at the airport will make a great first impression about MTS and therefore serve as the primary gateway for pri arriving passengers for San Diego. Um, therefore, MTS and San Diego should prioritize the trolley to the airport as the ideal way to connect. Your time has expired. Thank you. Valerie Hightower, please make your way to the podium. Good morning, God bless. I need more than three minutes. I've been riding the transit since 1988. Now here's the problem that I'm running into with y'all drivers. They're disrespectful and rude. Um, they scared to call security and one driver told me every time she calls security, we're talking about the route four, that everybody's on lunch break or there is no availability. That route four, 11, 13, 9.55, and the 9.29 and the 7 after dark needs security and need available security. As long as these buses and trains are running, we need security out there. The second thing, bathrooms. You got a side out here talking about no public urination, but this is a building for the public and it's closed. When that bathroom downstairs on the first floor it's closed. We can't come up here on the fifth or the tenth floor to use the bathroom. So either make the bathrooms available. Your time has expired. Hold up. I'm not boot because I ride the system. You need to make these bathrooms available and give I'm us sorry. bathrooms. Ma'am, I'm sorry. We're only uh, doing one minute public comment today. So uh, oh, thank how you, gonna do? you know what? May God bless each and every one of y'all. Alex Wong, please unmute yourself now. During MTS's November board meeting, Chair Whitburn questioned the premise that an external two to four minute headway provides a lot of value over a seven and a half minute headway on a trolley for airport travelers. However, Sandag's report says that the airport trolley will run only at every 15 minute frequencies, not 7.5 minute frequencies. And even if airport travelers are fine with 15 minute frequencies, if we want rail to go beyond the airport and serve Liberty Station, Midway Rising, and Navarre, then ultra high frequencies are crucial. When people have to wait up to 15 minutes for a trolley, while they can drive from Midway Rising to Santa Fe Depot in 12 minutes, they're going to drive. When people have to wait up to 15 minutes for a trolley, when, while they can drive from Navarre to Liberty Station in seven minutes, they're going to drive. The only way to entice people to take transit between these destinations is through the two minute frequencies that the people mover will provide. Um, next is 3731. Please dial star six to unmute yourself. It's truth. It's the MTS minute, just like I knew there would be. I don't care if it's the last meeting of the year. I request shorter agendas. Now, MTS holiday stories for you guys. Story one. At a trolley station, a guy started talking to me. He said he was on probation. And Truth, it looks like we lost audio. Are you restarting my 60 seconds? We will give you 45 seconds. Okay. Story one, at a trolley station, a guy started talking to me. He said he was on probation and ended up being a complete pervert. I won't go into details, but I may have even seen him again banging on a trolley window the other day. Story two, remember the guy who stabbed the 21-year-old on the trolley that MTS failed to even address? I may have just seen him. Of course, I reported this to Crime Stoppers and to MTS. A transit security followed him, but no one at MTS responded to my text about it. Y'all need to talk to security about responding to people when they call or text with security concerns. Last story, a friend told me that when her out-of-state friend visits, she asked why San Diego has the worst elements ride the public transit. And, you know, that's the whole reason I come back for MTS torches, because there's a lot of ignorance regarding public transit. And I realized it was important for me to, unfortunately, keep up with it. Hopefully some of you will think about it over the holiday break, because my two cents isn't enough for MTS to stay in business at this rate of lack of safety time and perception expired. of reality. 
the original DRA. Please unmute yourself now. I think it took a second. Um, yeah, so it's kind of sad that you only give people one minute now. You know, you don't even have that many people coming in to talk to you guys about what's happening. But when they do, they're telling you some pretty um, significant concerns. And, you know, you're just really not giving them an opportunity to fully express that. But then you guys will sit there and talk about, you know, everything for as long as you want uh, when it should be the people shaping all of this. And when you have a lack of uh, safety um, and security um, and there's, you know, a need for public restrooms, um, these are things that you guys need to start thinking about in a serious manner because you can't just say that you want it to look like there's, uh, you know, security and whatnot when people are, you know, being stabbed and different things are, are happening and we're allowing children to ride on this public transit for free. Um, you really need to do your due diligence and listen to what the concerns of the public are and start providing bathrooms and security um, if you want everybody to be engaging in this kind of um, way of travel. Um, otherwise, to expect people to do it is pretty your ridiculous. Time has expired. Jared Coswell, please unmute yourself now. Jared, it looks like you're still muted. Jared, go ahead and unmute yourself. We can move on, Chair. That concludes public comment. All right, thank you, Clerk. Uh, let's move on to our consent items, which are items three through 28. Clerk, is there any public comment on the consent items? We do. Jose Puga, please make your way to the podium. Good morning. My name is uh, Jose Puga. I'm the business agent uh, for the Teamster 683 that represents the Transdeb bus drivers in South Bay. Um, and I'm here for item 24. As you can see, there was $439,946 uh, given to uh, Transdev for one contract and another $750,000 given for another contract on here is for it claims wages for unions. Uh, what I want to point out here is that this is something that Transdev does all over the United States. Recently in, 20, I believe, 2021, they were awarded a six-year contract with extensions, um, and there was agreements on how much money they were going to, you know, go ahead and, and the budgets pretty much what they propose and this was awarded to them this is something they're they do all over the united states we are going to start negotiating for our maintenance which covers the south bay uh maintenance and alcohol uh, facility as well and we our first state of negotiations is no, january 1st your time i just want to let you know that we had a 30 day 34 day strike and possibly the We're same outcome is going to be here. comment to one minute today i'm sorry thank okay. you for your input Thank you. Ayanda Myfield, please make your way to the podium. I don't know how to do that. Good morning. My name is Ayanna. I'm from I'm a bus operator from South Bay and been having problems with the uh, restrooms. We've been having problems with the restrooms and I've been emailing them daily and sending them photos. Sometimes they don't even respond back. And when they do respond back, they said that they're gonna get back to it and you don't hear no results anywhere. And we're also having problems with the homeless being camped out around the restrooms. Not being clean and having them camping out and us operators are not safe to be able to use them as well as they're smoking their stuff is unacceptable. And Transdev is over here asking for money and nothing is being resolved. And it's unsanitized and unhealthy for us operators. I wish you would do something about that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry, I could, where was that happening? Okay. Uh, location so far is uh, 13th and Broadway is one of them. Euclid as well as uh, Old Town. And I believe what else? I um, Iris as well. 
is is really horrible. I wish you would look in the area because they say that they're being clean and they're not being clean. And about the time you get back to them, they're supposed to be cleaned by before or by eight o'clock a.m. and it's like four or five o'clock and it's still being really disgusting. Carol Kim, please make your way to the podium. Good morning, board members. I'm just coming forward. My name is Carol Kim. I'm the business manager of the San Diego County Building and Construction Trades Council, and our project labor agreement is on the consent agenda today. We put a lot of work into this, and your staff have done an amazing job of representing you and your interests and the interests of the public. We're looking forward to a strong partnership to uplift workers here locally and to do more to bring more workers into strong union construction careers. Thank you so much. Jared Caswell. Please unmute yourself now. Jared, it looks like you're still muted. All right, we're gonna take you at the end of the speaker list. Dustin Steiner, please unmute yourself now. Good morning, Dustin Steiner calling on behalf of the over 900 union and non-union member firms of the Associated General Contractor San Diego. I sent a letter yesterday, so I will just highlight one point in that, which is Sandag, who most recently passed a project labor agreement, excuse me, I'm calling uh, in opposition to item 27, which is interesting that it's on the consent calendar, but anyway, um, and calling to, to highlight the Sandag PLA, which was a $5 million threshold. The first project came in at 42% over the engineer's estimate and had one responsible bidder. So uh, you don't have to listen to me. You can look right over down the street at Sandag and see what's happening with project labor agreements. Thank you. Phone number in 3731. Please dial star six to unmute yourself. I'm five of anything. It should have been our elders writing public transit on the taxpayers. I'm not disrespectful whippersnappers. And I'm six and 25, $83 million in gas taxes on drivers to go to public transit is taxation without representation. And it's 11 through 13, $1.4 million for more MTS workers with a 20% turnover rate. And then 18 is over $2.1 million for a retaining wall, almost as expensive as a border wall. I'm 22, is over $2.7 million for janitorial supplies because MTS stations are often filthy. And 23, if MTS is race neutral, does that mean aliens can take human jobs? And 24 is over $1.8 million to French company TransDev for inflation salary increases. And 27, no to PLAs, which increase project costs and gives over $1.5 million to consultant TSG Enterprises. And item 28, the legislative program summed up, MTS needs more money, even if it means opposing good business sense, such as fair box recovery, and MTS keeping personal identifiable information on people. And there's already equitable transportation. Everybody suffers expired. equally on the unsafe and inefficient public transit. Corey Schumer. Together. Please unmute yourself now. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Corey Schumacher, and I am the political director of IBEW 569, representing 3,600 union electricians and power professionals in San Diego and Imperial counties. Today, I'm here to urge your approval of item number 27 on the consent uh, agenda, uh, which is the PLA. Uh, PLAs ensure the financial and physical safety of our communities. I think the thing um, that I wanted to highlight here was the 40% uh, goal for the inclusion of local hire provisions, which will create viable and legal ways to ensure job creation locally uh, and that dollars will be uh, spent locally, which increases the economic impl impact of, um, of the, the um, pay to our workers by a factor of two to four. Um, thank you very much for all of the work on this, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. The original DRE, please unmute yourself now. 
Yeah, it seems that you guys have a very difficult time retaining, like taking care of uh, your employees to make sure that they are um, having all the things that they need, especially when you only give them like one minute and nobody ever wants to listen to them uh, when they come in and speak. And putting all this stuff on a consent agenda to allow two seconds per item is pretty ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that you guys want to go and uh, lobby for certain things with the legislature to get money, you should be doing that and pushing for things like bathrooms and making sure that that, you know, the conditions um, that you're providing for your workers and all of this is is something that actually people want to come work for you, not leave the job. Um, so if you did better, there would be people coming and wanting to actually work for this entity and not try and leave it as quick as possible or feel like they have to stay because it's the only thing that they can, um, you know, do for the time being. But you guys aren't providing the basic necessities for even your workers, let alone the people that ride transit. So you need to be, you know, concentrating on that and lobbying for things like that as opposed to just your time taking is them. Calvin Barrios, please unmute yourself now. Good morning, board members. My name is Kelvin Barrios. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for Laborers Local 89. I'm here speaking on behalf of my business manager, Valentin Macedo, and our 4,000 union construction workers. I'm speaking in support of um, the PLA item, I believe is item 27. Um, you know, we really appreciate the work that the board has done on this, and it's taken a, a few times, you know, uh, in negotiations, but I believe that this is a great agreement for the MTS. And really want to echo, you know, the points that um, Carol Kim and Corey Schumacher have made about the benefits of PLAs. I think this is why in the county, a lot of other cities are now enacting these, um, as well as, you know, looking to like San Diego Unified and other school districts that have active PLAs. And they've been really great for their districts, really great for the public and really great for a local workforce. So, again, thank you for the support. Um, you know, again, if you guys have any other questions or anything like that, always feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Jared Coswell. How are you doing? I think I'm unmuted finally. So, sorry about that. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Um, uh, two, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a former retired um, iron worker, uh, union iron worker, and I am in support of the PLA 227, but I'll, I'll touch base really quick on the open comment. I'm a resident of Imperial Beach, and I, um, I don't um, see the success in the 227 and uh, it really needs to get off third street uh, if you guys I know you have a meeting with our city coming up if you guys could send out maybe a couple people one sitting down on the corner of um, 13th and IB Boulevard and you can watch the flow of the people coming in and then also down on Seacoast and then you could also see the status of where the buses currently turn and park uh, while they wait for ridership um, they're blocking all the views and then they can't make the turn successfully on third street from Ivy Boulevard. It en encroaches into the oncoming traffic lane because the bus is so big. Um, that's, uh, that's all I got. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming back to me. That concludes public comment, Chair. Thank you very much, Clerk. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent items? I'll make the motion. All right. We have a motion from Member Dillard. I'd like uh, happy to make a second and then I just had a brief comment about the process and uh, program. I just wanted to say thank you for continuing to, to push on that. Um, and I, I know it's not a big dollar amount. Um, we had a lot of conversations here over the years about the value of not just, you know, Pronto Extend, but the Pronto program um, more generally and youth opportunity passes. Um, the Extend program is life changing for the, the young folks who get those passes. Um, it creates an opportunity, not just for them to get to and from things that they need to do, um, but for these young people in particular, um, it is a way of letting um, letting them know that their, their community sees them and values them and wants to invest in them. Um, and so um, again, really happy to see the extension of the Pronto Extend program um, and looking forward to the next, next chapter of this. Um, because there's just really, really great benefits from it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Ila Rivera. Any further discussion? Member Frank. Um, I would just like to register a no vote on item 27. Thank you, Member Frank. Actually, I'm gonna do the same. All right, thank you, Member Hall. Uh, Member Leba Gonzalez, did you want to recuse? Yes, please. Okay, 
uh, will allow you to step on the up. item 27. Please. Right. Chair. Oh, sorry, uh, Member Donovan. Yes. Uh, I'd like to record a no vote on 27 also. Thank you, Member Donovan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those no, uh, voting no on the entirety of the consent agenda, please say nay. Uh, go ahead, clerk. Gonzalez? Uh, no, that, we'll just do it as a oh. voice vote, but we've got recorded no's uh, from three members, uh, Member Hall, Member Donovan, and Member Frank on item 27 uh, with a recusal from I Member Leva Gonzalez, and the rest is a yes. I think that fails then. And three people voted no. Or is it a majority of the people in? Oh, okay then, sorry. Yeah, so the just to be, clarify for the record, um, it, the, this consent item is something that only requires a majority of the members present. So if there are 10 members present um, and seven vote yes, and or six vote yes, one's recused and three vote no, it still passes. All right. And that's why I have the lawyer here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clerk, uh, do you feel like you captured that? Yes. Okay, um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our discussion on the consent agenda. We are going to go ahead and move on to item number 29, which is the Senate Bill 125 allocation package. Uh, this is an action item for the board's consideration. Uh, we have discussed this previously. Uh, last week, the executive committee voted unanimously to recommend board approval of this package as presented. Uh, and to walk us through it, we'll invite Dennis Desmond to present the item. Good morning. Thank you, Dennis Desmond, Director of Planning and Scheduling. Um, excited to bring to you today our proposed allocation package for Senate Bill 125. Senate Bill 125 amended the state budget to add $4 billion in TIRCP, Transit Inner City Rail Capital Program funding, and $1.1 billion in Zero Emission Transit Capital Program funding uh, to the FY23 budget. MTS is anticipated to receive approximately $284 million from this. Most of that will come in the first two years, about $136 million in the first year and $129 million in the second year, with a little bit to follow in years three and four. In terms of the intent for the uh, capital funding for the TIRCP, the projects are intended to demonstrate reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and to increase ridership. Um, this is additional funding for, and, and it can be used for additional funding for previously approved TIRCP projects, which we are proposing. The ZETCP capital eligible projects can be used for the purchase of zero emission buses, zero emission bus infrastructure, uh, zero emission facility modifications, and overall projects that demonstrate reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. In terms of the operating funding uh, under both the TIRCP and the ZTCP, uh, the operations funding can be used um, to retain service, uh, to restore service that's been cut, um, to increase service, um, prioritizing um, transit dependent communities. Uh, it can also be used um, for vehicle infrastructure um, to ensure safety and state of good repair uh, for free and reduced fare programs, um, planning expenses related to um, implementation of services that recover ridership, uh, operating expenses for services that increase ridership, and to invest in increased safety and security measures. In terms of social equity, the SB 125 does have a requirement that the projects must demonstrate how the project is expected to provide direct, meaningful, and assured benefits to a disadvantaged community, low-income communities, or low-income households, as defined by Senate Bill 535, and Assembly Bill 1550. Transit operations requests must identify those benefits to transit dependent riders for activities funded by the requests. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of how we um, did that analysis for this proposed allocation package. In terms of the new services that we're going to be proposing, we did three analyses of that. The SB 35 analysis, uh, through the Cal and Virus screen, as well as the AB 1550, also through Cal and Virus screen, 
uh, as required by the SB 125. But then we also did a third measure, which is to use the FTA's uh, Title VI methodology that we typically do for our major service changes. So in looking at all of these different metrics and ways that we measure uh, the impacts to um, low income and minority populations under SB 535, our overall service area population is 11% disadvantaged. However, 19% of the uh, population is disadvantaged that is impacted by the improvements proposed here. Uh, for AB 1550 low income communities, 40% of our service area is uh, low income under AB 1550, and 53% of the population benefiting population is low income. And we see similar results under the uh, Title VI. 58% uh, of our service area is minority. Uh, the benefiting population is 65% minority, and same with low income. Under the Title VI definition, 25% is low income, and the benefiting population is 29% low income. So um, that's a good story all around for these uh, package of service improvements. For the capital funding, we're proposing improvements at four of our bus divisions uh, for the ZEB infrastructure. Uh, these projects will directly serve over 100 communities that are considered both SB 535 disadvantaged and AB 1550 low income, and more than 800 jobs will be made available uh, through the construction of these projects. Three of these projects are located within AB 1550 areas and SB 535 areas. Uh, that's in South Bay, East County, and downtown. The fourth in Kearney Mesa is not either AB 1550 or SB 30, 535. Um, however, the KMD Kearney Mesa division does share a border with um, some um, low income communities under AB 1550. The other thing about these projects is that, of course, when we do a improvement at a bus division, it's not just improving at the bus division, but it's in allowing us to deploy zero emission buses throughout the communities that are served. Um, so the uh, benef benefits and impacts are really spread throughout the areas that these divisions are located in. On the screen right now is a map showing uh, where our four divisions are located in, uh, superimposed on a map of the SB 535 census tracts, which are shown in blue, and the AB 1550 census tracts, which are shown in red. Uh, so in downtown San Diego, we have our uh, Imperial Avenue division, which is located in both. In the South Bay, we have our um, South Bay division in Southern Chula Vista, also located in both. And in East County in El Cajon, uh, our East County division also located in both. And then the fourth division is up in Kearney Mesa. So uh, you can see it's close by to some AB 1550 low income communities. Under the Zero Emission Transit Capital Program, again, we're proposing improvements at four of our divisions. Uh, this will help us build out our zero emission bus infrastructure to uh, increase our deployment of uh, zero emission buses. And we're proposing $46 million of the funding be used for this to build the um, system out through 2029. Um, we currently have already completed phase one at our South Bay Division with 24 uh, charging positions for buses. This would fund phase two at the South Bay uh, for additional um, com a total of 73 total bus charging positions. Um, also Imperial Avenue, 30 charging positions, Kearney Mesa, 27, and East County, 32 uh, charging positions. For the TIRCP uh, program, we're uh, recommending security enhancements. This is actually a package of enhancements that was approved by the board back in September. So this would use uh, that TIRCP funding through the SB 125 to pay that cost of $3.5 million a year, which will support uh, additional staff and teams um, in that area. The Orange Line Improvement Project is a project that will uh, bring the Orange Line up to the same level of um, state of good repair as our blue line. As you recall, the blue line was completely reconstructed uh, in the mid 2010s. Um, and this will do the same thing to the orange line. So some of the shelters and customer facing amenities have already been done as part of the blue line project on the orange line, but the orange line still needs the um, catenary and switches and signaling and, and the other things that are uh, behind the scenes infrastructure to be brought up to the same level as the blue and green lines. So um, we would use $26 million of the SB 125 uh, to do that for the orange line, um, and that will supplement other CIP funding for this project. We're also proposing a number of service enhancements. Uh, one of these is trolley service enhancements. 
uh, eight million dollars a year in additional trolley service. Uh, we would bring the frequency up to 15 minutes all day on every day on all three routes. Uh, the blue line is essentially almost there, um, but the orange and green line still have some 30 minute uh, service periods, especially on weekends and at nights. Um, so we would bring all of those up to 15 minutes. The orange line increases would have to take place after the uh, TIRCP modernization uh, project, but we could enhance uh, frequencies on Route 4 to supplement that during the construction period, which parallels the orange line. The green line enhanced frequency would also have to be paused during construction in the later phases of that project where the orange and green line share uh, track uh, in the East County. <clears throat> We're also proposing an additional $3.7 million per year on the blue line, which would uh, increase the service between downtown and UTC up to the seven and a half minutes that we already have uh, between the border and downtown, and that would be during peak periods. So uh, right now, folks coming up from the border going towards UTC um, have to transfer at America Plaza if they're not on a through trip. So during peaks, this would um, provide a through service trip all the way up towards UTC. We're proposing three buckets of bus service enhancements. Uh, the first is the IRIS Rapid Operations, approximately $4 million per year. Uh, we would use the SB 125 funding to uh, backfill that. The second is uh, service restoration um, in the next year, uh, approximately $8 million a year in services that uh, will need to be restored um, as dri new drivers come on board and we're able to restore those. And then the third is uh, $8 million a year in new services um, these are things that were identified uh, in a number of ways. One is through our Elevate SD program just before the pandemic um, and includes some priorities that we've heard from um, the social equity working group as well as during our social equity listening tour. It includes overnight uh, blue line bus service uh, to the border and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, other span increases for later uh, evening service and also on weekends and we've prioritized uh, routes that go through disadvantaged communities. So a sample package of what these $8 million um, could purchase and what we're recommending at this point, uh, again, is that that first one is a new uh, downtown to border route that would operate uh, overnight when the blue line can't operate. So it would, we'd essentially be providing 24 hour service between uh, downtown and the border. It would be on the blue line trolley during the day. And then from approximately uh, 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., we would operate this supplementary bus service, which would operate as an express service. Um, every 30 minutes, seven days a week. Uh, we're also proposing some of other improvements, Route 4 uh, along the Imperial Avenue corridor. Uh, we'd like to bring that up to 15 minutes during uh, weekday peaks um, between downtown and Euclid. Um, and I'm sorry, that's peaks and midday, so it would be all day 15 minutes between downtown and Euclid. And then every 30 minutes all day on weekends when currently we have 60-minute uh, periods of service. We also looked uh, at other 60 minute frequencies that we have out there and we're pro proposing to bring those up to 30 minutes. Uh, and that's several routes on Sundays, including Route 28 on Rosecrans, Route 709 on East H Street, Route 901 uh, along the Silver Strand and Route 961 between National City and Encanto. Uh, there are a couple weekday routes that are currently at 60 minute frequencies we're proposing to bring up to 30 minutes and that's Route 838 between Lakeside and Alpine and Route 851 between La Mesa and Spring Valley. And then we're proposing later spans on some of our core network services that end uh, between uh, approximately 11 and p.m. and 12 midnight now, and we'd bring those up until about 2 a.m., and that's uh, Route 3 between Euclid Trolley and Hillcrest, uh, Route 10 between Old Town and City Heights, Route 12 between Downtown and Skyline Hills, and Rapid 235, uh, the I-15 Rapid Corridor. So. Uh, and a lot of these were really um, uh, brought about by comments that we've heard about how difficult it is to use the system when we're at 60 minute headways, especially for people that don't necessarily work uh, a nine to five or eight to five Monday through Friday, but have to work on weekends and have to work on evenings when our frequencies are so much lower. Um, this can really help. So we really concentrated on where can we bring some of those 60 minute frequencies up to 30 minutes. We're also proposing to add a million dollars a year in bus stop accessibility improvements. This is an existing CIP project that we fund uh, each year, and this would add a million dollars, which will allow us to add approximately 20 bus stops. Um, these are locations where we don't have current ADA compliance, 
and we need to add concrete or make other improvements in order for uh, the stop to be um, fully ADA compliant and wherever possible we add the additional uh, hardscaping to add uh, benches and shelters uh, in the future. We're also looking closely at the Otay Mesa area. Uh, Otay Mesa has grown substantially over the last 20 years uh, and we haven't had additional transit funding to keep up with that growth. So as the area continues to grow east, we've had a lot of challenges um, with serving those new uh, developments in that new area. So uh, eastward road extensions, uh, the new Otay Mesa East Port of Entry, um, upgrades to Airway Road and other things have really developed that area out where we need to take a more holistic look at it. There are several areas and trip generators in the area um, that don't currently have service, the Ocean View Hills community, um, the CBX Cross Border Express. Uh, Amazon has some large facilities out there that employ almost 10,000 people, um, and we don't have great service to those areas. So um, what we're recommending with this package is to have a local area transit study that would look at the entire Otay Mesa area and make recommendations for how we can better serve the area um, not only using the resources that we already have, but also um, put an additional $1.5 million in annual operating costs to fund other services in the area. So a comprehensive look at what we're proposing. Um, all of the uh, recommendations in the plan are listed here um, in order. And then the last one that I'll mention is um, structural deficit balancing we're proposing to use uh, in FY27 and FY28 as the um, federal money is spent down, then the state money would supplement and balance our budget through FY28. So the staff recommendation is that uh, the MTS Board of Directors approve the SB125 allocation package, uh, and that's in the same format substantially as attachment A. And I'll mention that this is due to the state by the end of this month. We'd like to get it in as early as possible. Um, the state's indicated that they were going to take these applications in the order they're received. So we'd like to be first in the door. Um, and hopefully that means that we'll be the first to um, start receiving the funding in spring. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Desmond. Clerk, do we have any public comment on this item? We do, Rosa Sanchez. Please make your way to the podium. Rosa Sanchez, por favor, avance al podium. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Rosa Sanchez. Soy residente de City Heights. Um, y hablo a favor de todos los pasajeros que utilizamos el transporte público todos los días. Estoy aquí para que se implemente el autobús express de la frontera de a San Diego en el año fiscal 2025. El problema es que mucha gente que transporta, que trabaja hasta altas horas de la noche y a las primeras horas de la mañana no tienen cómo transportar, transportarse porque no hay servicio de una a cuatro eh, de la mañana. Es urgente que el bus empiece a funcionar. La solución es que se implemente el autobús express desde la frontera hacia el centro de San Diego lo más pronto posible que sería para el año fiscal 2025. Gracias. Good morning. My name is Rosa Sánchez. I am a resident of City Heights and speak up for all riders who use public transportation daily. I'm here to get the express bus from the border to San Diego implemented in fiscal year 2025. The problem is that many people who work late into the night and early into the morning have no way to get around because there is no service between one to four in the morning. It is urgent that the bus service starts working soon. The solution is to implement the express bus from the border to downtown San Diego as soon as possible. That would be for fiscal year 2025. Thank you. Fanny Esquivel, please make your way to the podium. Fanny Esquivel, por favor, acérquese al podium. Buenos días, mi nombre es Fanny Esquivel. Yo resido en City Heights. Me gusta, me, me gusta llevar la voz a mi comunidad. Mis hijos usan el transporte público todos los días para asistir a la universidad y a su trabajo. 
estoy aquí para pedir que el autobús número 235 tenga más frecuencia y que sea implementada lo más pronto posible. Mi hijo usa el autobús 235 para asistir a la universidad, pero muchas veces pierde la conexión para el autobús que lo lleva a su universidad. Se ocupa que, se ocupa que la transferencia sea te, a tiempo para así poder llegar a tiempo a su clase en la universidad. Pedimos que el autobús número 235 esté pasando frecuentemente y sea aprobado para el año fiscal 2025. Gracias. Okay, English interpretation. My name is Fanny Esquivel. I live in City Heights and enjoy bringing the voice of my community. My children use public transportation every day to attend their college and work. I'm here to ask that the number 235 bus be made more frequent and implemented as soon as possible. My son uses the 235 bus to attend university, but many times he misses the connection for the bus that takes him to, call, to his college. He makes sure that the transfer, we need to make sure that the transfer for be on time so that he can get to his classes at the university on time. We ask that the 235 bus be running frequently and that these be approved for the 2025 fiscal year. Thank you very much. Mayra Bailadas, please make your way to the podium. Mayra Bailadas, por favor, dirígese al podium. Buenos días, mi nombre es Mara Baladé, resido en Sirija y sí tengo usando el transporte público más de 15 años, porque yo no manejo. Es de la manera que me muevo para ir a mis citas y lugares donde, donde tengo que ir. Vengo a pedir que si se implemente la ruta 10 con más frecuencia y todos los días de la semana de Old Town a College Avenue, lo más pronto posible. El, pro el problema es que al no pasar la ruta 10 los fines de semana, hay que caminar hasta cinco cuadras para tomar la ruta y poder ir a donde uno ocupa ir. Es difícil regresar a casa tarde y luego caminar hacia nuestro hogar. La solución sería que la ruta número 10 pasara los fines de semana, de igual manera que entre semana, ya que es necesario para todas las familias que usan la ruta número 10 para hacer nuestras necesidades y que este aumento de servicios sea implementado para el año fiscal 2025. Gracias. English interpretation. Good morning. My name is Mayra Valades. I live in City Heights and have been using public transportation for over 15 years because I don't drive. It's the way I move to go to my appointments and places where I have to go. I come to ask that route number 10 be implemented more frequently at every day of the week from Old Town to Collage Avenue as soon as possible. The problem is that because route number 10 is not that frequent on we weekends, you have to walk up to five blocks to take the route and be able to go where you need to go. It's hard to come home late and then walk home like this. The solution would be for route number 10 to run on weekends in the same way as on weekend, weekdays, since it is necessary for all families who use Route 10 for our needs to be implemented by fiscal year 2025. Thank you very much. Carolina Martinez, please make your way to the podium. Good morning, board members and staff. My name is Carolina Martinez with the Environmental Health Coalition. We're here to request that the proposed frequency improvements and the border route be implemented by fiscal year 2025. At the border, early shift workers have to cross the hours long immigration lines. And after that, cross all the transit barriers. At 4 a.m., all the trolley cars are going from the border to downtown and they're full. The blue line is packed with construction workers, hotel workers, and more. There's only standing room at 4 a.m. 
MTS is very fortunate to be in a financial position to implement bus frequency increases and the new border route. However, the three long driver hiring retention challenges is preventing implementation despite funding availability. We ask that the border route and all the bus frequency Your projects be proposed and implemented by fiscal year 2025. Thank you. Vanessa Lopez, please make your way to the podium. Hi, good morning. My name is Vanessa and I live in City Heights, but many of my family members and friends cross the border on a daily basis and they use public transportation to get around once they're in San Diego. So I'm here to ask you that you provide 24 hour service for the blue line via the border route within fiscal year 2025. For example, my aunt and cousin crossed the border to use the blue line trolley every day for the past 10 years. Um, so having access to bus routes at all hours of the night would be very beneficial for people like my aunt and my cousin so they can have more options once they cross the border and they can reach their destination as quick as possible. We need to implement the Border Express 24-hour service so people who are in a similar situation as my aunt have the time to get things done and we need this service now. I am here to urge you to provide 24-hour service for the blue line via the border route within fiscal year 2025. Thank you. Phone number ending in 3731. Please dial star six to unmute yourself. MTS got $140 million from the American Ruination Plan Act, and yet the projected cost for MTS to operator estimated to increase by 7%, while ridership is only 4%. Sounds like the problem will get worse to the tune of $388 million by 2028. That's nuts. Maybe you guys should put out a donation jar at every trolley station and bus stop. People are more likely to pay into that. The government control freaks should be as concerned about the toxic sewage emissions of the border as they are about VMT and GHG. For the Oakland Boulevard bus lane restriping deal, I find it weird and confusing, not helpful. And for the rapid buses, they're not as rapid as their name suggests. They still get stuck in highway traffic and have to stop at stoplights. I do like the future increased frequencies of buses and trolleys, especially every 15 minutes instead of a 30-minute wait. But where are the drivers and the money to fulfill those requests? But this was the most important part, quote, the NCS customer satisfaction survey indicated an overwhelming response for more security, cleanliness, and lighting, end quote. Learn from it. Implement it the right way. Thank you. The time has expired. Um, next is the original DRA. Please unmute yourself now. Yeah, when you guys are sitting here talking about benefits and impacts and different things and that riders must benefit, you're not telling them about the lithium bombs that you're putting them in and the fact that they could totally combust with the bus um, and it'll be a fire that can't be put out, uh, let alone just the radiation that comes off of the um, infrastructure that you're going to be using for charging these um lithium bombs, uh, you need to be uh, informing the people, the riders and your employees of the dangers that you're putting them in by putting them on a lithium bomb. Um, if they get into a car accident, a, an accident on the bus, um, they can just combust from the fumes and keep recombusting. Um, and the fires don't get put out. They actually stay on fire underwater. So you need to be uh, informing your riders, just like when there's Prop 65 and cancer causing agents, you need to be telling people right at your own risk and work here at your own risk riding in this lithium bomb because you could potentially die from just riding in it. People tend to care about the trash trucks that need to be replaced because of lithium batteries and not the safety of the people. That concludes public comment, Chair. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, we will now open board discussion on this item and take any motions. Uh, and we will begin with Member Moreno. Um, thank you for the presentation and um, thank you to staff for bringing such an excellent package forward uh, for the board's consideration. Um, as I stated at the executive committee last week, um, I am concerned that the ongoing driver uh, shortage is preventing us from effectively using these funds in a timely manner. Uh, in particular, we were told that the community's demand to accelerate the implementation of the overnight bus route uh, from downtown to the border could be feasible, um, could, um, I'm sorry, could not be feasible, right? Or it could be feasible uh, because of the uh, driver shortage. Uh, currently we do have a driver shortage, but 
it we could are be feasible. It could be feasible. Dennis, you want to? Sure. Yeah, we, we um, there's a planning component of that and there's some uh, board action required, but we can certainly um, front load all of that and get all of the planning and everything done so that we're ready to hit the ground running as soon as we have the resources to put, that, put that in. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I want to thank Chair Whitburn for agreeing uh, to bring a standalone item to the board early next year explaining the cause of the driver shortage and potential solutions uh, that staff has identified. Um, it's my hope uh, that if this driver shortage is resolved more quickly, um, uh, then we can expect that we could accelerate the implementation of uh, downtown to uh, border bus route to fiscal year 25 instead of fiscal year 26. Um, so with that, uh, Chair, I am happy to make a motion to accept uh, staff's recommendations. And that concludes my comments. Thank you very much, uh, I'll Member second We have a second from Member Hall. Uh, let's go to Member Bush. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, staff, for all your work on this. Uh, I'm not going to repeat all of the comments I made uh, last week. I would um, ask for uh, consideration from Member Moreno and uh, whoever seconded it to um, to put on uh, advancing the bus frequencies and the border um, uh, the border to downtown route by FY 2025. I do understand that there's um, driver shortages right now. Um, and we have current challenges, but we the funding is there. Um, and the key was we could do it. Um, this is you know about six months away. Um, and there's a lot of other factors that we're going to discuss next month. But I think we should still have the goal um, and the plan to have it open in FY 2025. And then if uh, it turns out that there's still uh, shortages uh, at that at that point, then we can make some adjustments. But I think the funding is there. Um, we've seen the um, state, um, kind of the, the dark clouds, if you will, coming uh, fiscally on the state, but we have, th this is money right now that is potentially allocated. And so I, I do think we should seize the opportunity and push these, um, uh, these frequency enhancements um, sooner uh, rather, rather than later, because we do have the money for it. And I think if we, you know, uh, advance this, then we have an opportunity to challenge ourselves and and have some, uh, be proactive, be motivated to actually reach that goal for the driver driver shortages. Otherwise, if we leave it to FY 2026 as here, I feel like there's gonna be some complacency there. So I would encourage all of us to challenge ourselves, um, recognizing that if the shortages do continue, then yes, we're gonna have to make adjustments to these routes in FY 25, but I still uh, really think that we should we should push it. These are great projects, and it's it's rare to see this. Um, you know these projects, um, th these opportunities. We've we've heard the speakers. We know what our writers are are going through. So I would I would ask for consideration from the maker of the motion and the second to um, to advance the bus frequencies and the twenty four hour service, the the border to downtown route by FY twenty five. A point of clarification. I don't understand what consideration means. Are you asking us to amend the motion? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, I have heard from staff that this is not feasible. That it, am I incorrect in st making that statement? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily not feasible. Um, we have some service restorations that we're gonna do uh, as part of this, and then we have the additional service improvements, but we can certainly look at the timeline for those and maybe some of these improvements go in before some of the restorations. Um, so that's some flexibility that we have. Okay, well, if staff doesn't object, then I'm happy to accept that motion or that amendment. Would um, So this would be, we would replace some of the other things in the allocation package some of the other services, does that mean you have to reopen the allocation package and redo the analyses for the disadvantaged community studies? Uh, no, because it would all be the same improvements. It would just be the timing that we would be changing. Okay. The improvements themselves would be, would be the same routes, the same locations. So the motion would then be to prioritize the border to downtown route over the other improvements in the bus services. Is that? Uh, is that okay? 
I didn't necessarily say that it has. So I want it to be included as part of it. And if staff determines that there's timing, then you guys can bring it back. But I, I'm not suggesting uh, necessarily priority over the other projects. I'm saying that advancing uh, those two particular projects, the bus frequencies and um, the border to downtown route, that those two FY25. Yeah. Um, okay. And, but I'm not, I'm not, as part of the motion saying which you're other not ones raising to, which right. route over the other right okay. I, I think i'm open to staff coming back to us and if there's like conflicts there then let's let's talk so, about that so to answer your question it would be based on our retention and um hiring for bus drivers my my understanding from executive committee is that we're not capable of doing this because of the bus driver shortage which is why i brought forward um i asked the chair to docket an item on that topic particularly. So even if we wanted to, we can't physically do it. Um, but if staff is saying, hey, we could do it, let's do it, right? Let's, and that's why um, I accepted uh, his um, amendment. I, I don't know if the second- council member, <laughs> but, but, it, amendment. but I- I, I Thank you, member mother. We're just trying to get bus drivers in the door to make the um, adjustments to return the service to the levels that we cut before. So that would mean we can do it, but mm -hmm. I believe that it would require us to delay the other additions. I can, um, I just wanna say, I asked staff if we could do it and staff, your staff said we can. So I can't in good faith look at my community and say, we can't do it. Cause staff just said they could do, we could do it. Could, could I just ask a clarifying question? Because I want to make sure that what we're implementing, I, I think there's two issues. There is a plan document that we have to submit to the state to get in line for this. Right. Um, and then there's, can we accelerate the implementation of some of these things? I have not read the full document that's going to the state. So Dennis, would any of the direction from the board today to try to accelerate the bus improvements and which would improve, include trying to accelerate tackling the bus driver shortage issues so that we can implement them, require changes to the actual document being submitted to the state? Well, I, th I think that for one thing, um, we've referred to this as a sample package. So I think that we've left ourselves some flexibility. Um, any significant changes, we do have the ability to go back to the state and resubmit an amendment to the plan. Um, so that can certainly be done if it's necessary. Um, I'm, I'm not, uh, with no finding from the um, California State Transportation Authority, I'm not sure agency, um, but I would say that we have the flexibility the way that it's written to make at least some timing adjustments um, in the implementation of restorations versus new service improvements. So just so staff is clear on how to implement the what is being requested, it, it seems that the plan can be approved as is to go to the state, but a separate direction to staff to put together a plan on how to accelerate the implementation of the bus service enhancements and the new route um, as soon as possible. I don't know if that, I just wanna make sure I'm trying to like articulate what it is that's being asked of staff that's slightly different than what was before you today and that we know how to implement. Well, if, if one, one point I want to make is we got to get this in. We can adjust it later, but we need to get this in. And the goal is bring it up. I mean, if you make this happen in 2024, fantastic. But let's get the, the package in as is, and then we'll come back and adjust it later. But the reality is we got to get this money, period. And that's where our goal needs to be is let's get it in, get it going. And then after that, we can come back and do whatever we want. We have to take it out of the general fund. We'll do that. But let's let's do it the way, let's get the package in and get it issued. A point of clarification, I don't know if the seconder of the motion accepted the amendment. Just wanted to get that in Sounds the like record. you did not accept the amendment. I, I would like to make it a gold rather than that. So I don't really see a reason to do it. Let me ask Member Bush a question. So the concern is that if we do anything that requires any kind of re-examination of the environmental stuff, that could inhibit our ability to be first in line for this funding, which could inhibit our ability to get the funding. 
Um, and therefore there's a desire to get this submitted and be first in line. Um, but there is also an opportunity after we submit and get first in line uh, to make adjustments later. If we were to submit this package as is, so that we're first in line, uh, with an understanding that we will um, take up the, 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 the matter that you've brought forth and uh, attempt to accomplish your goal, uh, after we've submitted it, would that meet your requirements? I think that's progress. I think, thank you, Chair. I think that's progress, and I think that's a step in the direction, make, uh, right direction, making it a goal. However, my understanding from what staff said um, is that the environmental document is not impacted by the timing of this project. So I heard flexibility, and Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong. So I think if we, right now, today, as a board, directed to include the advancement of the bus frequencies to FY25 and the border to FY25, they wouldn't have to reanalyze everything. And we could submit the package to Member Hall's point as quickly as possible so it gets through. So that would still be, I don't, I don't see um, any uh, severe risk or downside to us making that adjustment. Um, but I'm, you know, if the board, if the um, if Member Hall wants to make it a goal as part of the amendment, I, I think that's, an improvement. I, I think it's, um, I, I think we could still just make the adjustments from the floor direct staff to, because the staff has indicated that the flexibility is there. So, um, but I'm okay with it. Chair, Hopefully that makes sense. Chair Whitburn, if I might, um, and I see there's several um, people who want to comment. Um, could we approve the staff recommendation in one motion and then you could then direct staff to return with a plan on expediting the services, the bus services? So basically just approve as is and then come back to the, with an, an extra. I made the motion. So <laughs> I, you know, I'm happy with moving this forward. I'm happy with uh, member Bush's um, um, amendment. Thank you. I'm happy. What do you okay. want to do? Point of clarification. So, so here's what we're going to do. Here, here's here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and uh, I haven't heard a second to uh, uh, the amendment. Uh, so we're unless there is further discussion, uh, I am going to uh, rule that the amendment has not been seconded. Uh, we will move forward with a vote on um, adopting the package as presented. I will then call on member Bush to make a motion to direct staff uh, to, and I'll let you articulate your motion. As in the substitute motion, Chair? It'll not be a substitute motion. It'll be, a ne it'll be another motion. Um, it'll be a separate, distinct motion, but it'll be a direction to staff. Uh, and then we'll see if there's a second for that motion. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and move on. I still see some folks on the lights here. Uh, I have member Chavez, uh, member Montgomery step, and then uh, at this point. So let's go to member Chavez. First of all, I am pro submitting the package ASAP. It's, it's important to get ahead of the line always. And I, I, I do wanna say that. Um, I wanna thank staff for the informative presentation on this item. We have to find a way to make this work. Um, I want to speak in support of all the frequency enhancement uh, staff has brought forward with this item as we work to encourage ridership and public confidence of our services. Having that bus or trolling service with increased frequency will allow members of the community to feel more comfortable knowing they won't have to wait as long to get on, to get to work, to get to school, or to get to their family. I Increased frequency lowers the time commitment to use transit and increases our capacity, especially for events and busy commutes. And moving forward, I even heard someone from the public say, why don't we think about 24 hours? Right now, we're not contemplating 24 hours, but at least maybe we can, moving forward, think about extending the hours into um, a little later than we, we what we have it right now, because keep it in mind that it's, the blue line that goes to downtown and back. Um, thinking about all the people that work in, in the service industry that get off after one and need this public transportation, 
these are our users. We're not providing for them. And I know there might be some issues to this, but I would love to see staff in, in not as far out, not in, in a near future, um, have some proposals for all the, this workforce that really, really needs this public transportation. So I just wanna end it with that. We know that the importance of the blue line, it's one of our main arteries. What can we do to service this people that get off work and don't have this public transportation after 1 a.m., right? Thank you. Thank you, Member Chavez. Member, uh, Chair Pro Tem Montgomery Step. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I'll start by thanking Sharon Dennis and the rest of the ATS team uh, for bringing this forward. I think it's a really good package. Um, reiterating my support um, with regard to the proposals for more funding towards the electric electrification of the fleet. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, all uh, trolley frequencies, the increases in those are super important to uh, our current ridership and also um, bringing more people on uh, to increase our ridership. I'm very pleased with the increase of frequencies for the Orange Line. Um, that has been a long time coming. And I will just say with regard to um, what sounds like the next conversation we will have. Um, I, I just want to make sure that advocacy for the Orange Line and folks in southeastern San Diego and East County um, stays on the table in the timeline in which it has been presented. I think that's super important. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that if we get our heads together, we can do it all. But I, I do want to say that that is also, it should also be a priority uh, frequencies on the on the Orange Line. Um, and so, just a couple quick things. Um, that we have heard from constituents. Um, there are uh, folks in um, the Skyline Paradise Hills area that take the uh, route uh, 961. Um, oftentimes people are taking uh, 961 uh, from working at the Plaza Bonita Mall and have experienced um, being stranded. Um, this is something that we've continued to bring up. So I wanna keep it on the table here. Um, and the last thing that I will say, um, and I'll go over some of these others offline because I know we have a, still a lot of work to do today, but I think that the proposals from Elevate um, that we had tabled um, are continue, you know, will continue to be useful in this SB 125 discussion. It would be helpful to see what we uh, agreed to there, what needs to be modified, of course, because things are changing so fast. Um, but as we uh, receive this funding, just making sure that the, did a lot of community work around uh, Elevate. So just making sure those are, we're still thinking about those. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Pro Tem Montgomery Step. Is there any further discussion on the staff recommendation for the SB 125 al allocation package uh, before we go to a vote on that? Uh, and following the vote on that, call on Member Bush to make a motion regarding um, a staff direction that he would like to suggest. Member Bush. Uh, yeah, I, I think the easiest thing is to just make a substitute motion, which my understanding on the Roberts rule that that would then go first. So I would make a substitution to approve staff recommendation with the change that the 24 hour uh, border to downtown service is advanced to FY25 and the bus frequency enhancements to uh, FY25. All right, um, Chair Pro Tem, I'll cover step. I just have a question. Um... Member Bush, I just want to I, I um, stress the frequencies on the orange line, and I don't know how this change would impact that. And so I just want to make sure that, for me, I have a clear picture of everything. Uh, yes. So for me, the intent isn't to push the orange line off. I think if staff, I think we uh, staff said that there's some flexibility on the timing there. And I th my expectation with the substitute motion is that staff can come back to us if they see that something has to be um, fall off in the timing um, than, uh, than the orange line or any other particular project. So my intent with advancing those isn't to displace the orange line. And my expectation with the motion is if it does displace something that then staff could come, could come back. Um, I need to clarify, I just got um, a text from one of my staff that says they will have to change some of the allocation package if we do that. Is that correct, Julia and Kenna? Okay. If, if the allocation has to be changed, it sounds like there might be a delay. I'm open to amending. Oh, so there wasn't a second on the substitute. I don't know, procedurally, 
I'm, I don't know if we can read on the record, I'm happy to amend the motion, which with uh, putting it as a goal, a staff, direct, a staff direction to, to advance, like so leaving the allocation package as is and directing staff to come back with to the board on advancing the bus frequency to FY25 and the 24 hour service, the border to downtown uh, 24 hour service to 25. I'm going to do those as two separate motions because I want this to be a clean motion. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm not hearing a sec. Okay. All right. So we're going to vote. Okay. So we have a. So just to be clear, if I can restate the motion, is to accept the staff recommendation as is, and staff comes back to um, to us with advancing the FY25. Um, to FY25 bus frequency and the 24 hour border to downtown service. I'm gonna recognize them as two separate motions and we will vote on them separately. Uh, we'll vote okay. on the staff recommendation first uh, and then we will vote on the second motion that you have brought forward and that has been seconded by member Ela Rivera. Um, okay, is there any further discussion on the first motion which was made by member Moreno and seconded by member Hall to adopt the staff recommendation. Seeing no further discussion, uh, let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. Gonzalez is absent. Chavez? Chavez, yes. Donovan? Yes. Montgomery Step? Yes. Goble is absent. Leva Gonzalez? Uh, yes. Dillard? Yes. Mendoza? Yeah, yes. Bush? Yes. Frank? Yes. Moreno? Moreno, yes. Hilo Rivera? Yes. Gloria is absent. Whitburn? Yes. Hall? Yes. The motion passes with um, 12 mem members voting yes and three absent. Now we have a uh, motion by member Bush that has been seconded by motion Ilo Rivera, uh, by member Ilo Rivera. Can somebody restate that motion so that we're clear on what the motion is? My, my understanding was that it was to direct staff to come back to the board with a plan or proposal to accelerate um, the bus service enhancements and the um, overnight um, downtown to border bus route by fy25 by fy25 okay thank you karen clerk do you have that motion captured all right and uh member Ela rivera that captures your intent as well okay we have a clear motion on the floor uh clerk please call the roll gonzalez is absent chavez yes donovan yes montgomery step yes Coble is absent. Leva Gonzalez? Yes. Dillard? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Bush? Yes. Frank? Yes. Moreno? Moreno, yes. Elo Rivera? Yes. Gloria is absent. Whitburn? Hall? Yes. The motion passes with 12 members voting yes and three members absent. I'm sorry, let me turn my mic on so that the public can hear. Uh, for meeting management purposes, we're gonna trail item 30, which is the Palm Avenue Trolley Station Transit Oriented Development until we return from closed session. So we will return after closed session to take up item 30 in open session. Uh, at this time, we will move into closed session.
ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು
All right, we are going to uh, return to open session. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Gonzalez is absent. Chavez? Present. Donovan is absent. Montgomery Stepp? Here. Goble is absent. Leva Gonzalez is absent. Dillard? Here. Mendoza? Here. Bush? Here. Frank is absent. Moreno? Present. Elo Rivera? Present. Gloria is absent. Whitburn? Here. Paul is absent. Chair, we have a call. Thank you, Clerk. I understand that we do have a public comment in regard to closed session. Uh, let's go ahead and take that at this time. Truth, please dial star six to unmute yourself. Well, thank you for that. Meeting management did not prevail. Okay, item 33, negotiations for two properties on Fairmont Avenue with 4D properties. One property being an old car lot near the Grantville station. I'm assuming for a trolley or bus maintenance area. Item 34, negotiations for one property at Northwest Corner Federal Boulevard and 47th Street with Lone Oak LLC. I'm assuming for another toxic electric bus charging infrastructure location. If so, I'm against it without the neighborhood's consent. Item 25, MTS is getting sued, and I hope it's a lawsuit from one of the recent victims of violence on the trolleys and not just a frivolous lawsuit. And item 36, it's been so nice not having narcissist Nathan Fletcher at the Board of Supervisors meeting. I personally never had a problem with that criminal, but he sure was a jerk to everyone else. And that includes using Nora to fill his spot to clean his hands of what was coming. But I doubt any real justice will come or if this case is even real since there are several actors involved. But Nathan will be back. Nobody's fooled by this. time has expired. The original DRA, please unmute yourself now. No idea why you would take public comment after you already engaged in pub, um, in closed session. <laughs> the way you guys do stuff is so crazy, and you should be doing all of the stuff you do in closed session in front of the people, especially any kind of negotiations or any kind of property deals, um, because you guys always want to act like you're transparent, and then you do stuff behind closed doors, and then when you have time to report back, um, and you're asked to report anything, you're like, there's nothing to report, even though we were back there for, you know, however many hours or whatever, back wherever, I mean, whatever, and you're closing it off to the public. And, um, you know, you're always doing that kind of stuff. And especially, like I said, why would you take public comment after the fact that you already, <laughs> I mean, you guys don't care what people say anyway, but I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous to do things so ass backwards um, I mean, I guess at least you're allowing for public comment at this time, but the way that you guys, you know, arbitrarily just decide to do things is, is Your asinine. Is expired. That concludes public comment, Chair. All right. Thank you, Clerk. Thank you to our public commenters. Um, Attorney Landers, is there anything to report out of closed session? Um, there's no reportable action. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's move to our uh, final item on the regular agenda, and that is item 30, the Palm Avenue Trolley Station Transit-Oriented Development. Uh, Karen Landers and Sean Mayotte will present this item. Okay, so this item, thank you, um, is relates to a, a transit-oriented development that the board has already approved um, with National Corps and Malik Infill. Um, it's a large um, several phase a development that the board approved in October of 2021 with National Corps and Malik. Um, it has over the last two years um, already received $24.3 million in grant awards. Um, and what we're here today is that there were some design changes that they needed to make to minimize construction cost and make the project more feasible for those grants. Um, and because of that, it triggered a need for the board to approve a um, amendment to the DDA. Um, the original development had four buildings, um, three would be affordable and one would be middle income. Um, and we also approved a reduction in our transit parking to 80 spaces um, with 111 for residents. Um, and that was a total of 390 apartments for homes. The new design actually increases the density, um, but it splits that to six buildings instead of four. So there would be five smaller affordable um, housing buildings and one 
um, similar to the original proposal size for the moderate income. Um, and it results in an increase by 16 um, apartment homes. And so it's actually an increase in density with this new design. And that there are no change to the MTS parking spaces, but there would be a reduction in the resident parking spaces from 111 to 80. Um, so one of the things that we also then, um, so that's what we want the board to approve is the change in that scope um, of the buildings. Um, the, the other issue is that what we have heard from the board over the last year, year and a half has been that various other transit operation amenities are important to you and specifically transit pa patron restrooms. Um, and so when we realized that this had to come back to the board to approve, we have been talking with National Corps and Malik about including a transit patron restroom um, in this project. Um, we actually at prior board updates had had Mayor Aguirre of Imperial Beach specifically request that we do talk about it at this location. Um, and then as you may recall, um, in October, the board approved a, a Spring Street TOD in La Mesa with Affirmed and they did agree to install a transit patron restroom. Um, through our negotiations with the National Corps and Malik team, um, they have agreed to construct the transit patient restroom, but they um, continue to object and do not want to be responsible for the operation and maintenance of that. Um, so that is a little bit of an open question. Um, our staff recommendation is that you approve the DDA amendment with a requirement that um, the developer um, construct, maintain, and operate the same language that we include in the Spring Street TOD, um, a transit patron restroom according to um, commercially reasonable terms and hours, which gives us some flexibility. We recognize that transit patron restrooms and just in general public restrooms is a complex issue and the, what needs to be in place to maintain and operate those um, and the level of effort required by the developer um, is changing. And so um, that is where we are with that. Um, the national core team does have their own objections of why they don't think that it should be included. And we're gonna let uh, John Seymour from uh, national core speak on that now. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sean. I'm John Seymour from national from the nonprofit national community Renaissance and thank you for your partnership. Um, all of the changes to the DDA are good for the project. Uh, the the uh, moving from three to five buildings creates the flexibility in financing, open air, more sunshine, access. We've accommodated the unit mix to um, um, uh, help other vulnerable populations, veterans, seniors, and large families. Karen mentioned we happen to add 16 more homes. That's also good news. And the parking remains the same. Um, our only... Our only objection is the operations of the bathroom at this point in time. We agree to build it. We will need to build it out of our own pockets, and that's okay with us, but we can't operate it. There's no money approved for the operations. We are down to the last uh, financing application, actually. We've been awarded all the money we need for the infrastructure, uh, uh, close to $25 million from the state through the infill infrastructure grant the REAP 2.0, um, 6 million, 6.3 million from Mayor Gloria's Bridge to Homes programs. And we're in procurement review right now at the Housing Commission. Um, the cost to build is not part of those performas, but like I said, we will build it. And definitely the cost of operations are not in any of those performas. Um, we've also talked with Gubbin Barche they're the legal counsel for numerous tax credit limited partnerships. And we've talked to Chelsea, Jim Anderson, and Jim Schmidt. We talked to Jimmy Silverwood. They're all very concerned as well on the operational costs. Specifically, what it would do to, to this project, we've ran a, a performa assuming these operational costs, if, if we can even do it. Um, they would exceed $2 million over the 55-year public lender payback period. They would reduce the MTS ground lease payment by over 200,000. And that 2 million that would be spent on the operations, again, if it can even be done through the IRS code, um, that's money that would not be recirculated through the housing commission to be lent, re-lent out for more affordable projects. So by the imposition of the operations, you're increasing the cost. Um, you're taking money out of circulation for future affordable housing. The other thing is the mortgage debt, which we can leverage. All affordable has a mortgage debt, and it's usually a small mortgage because the rents are so low. 
Uh, that crushes our debt by over 300,000, which causes another issue with the lenders and the public subsidy um, awards that we've already already received. Um, we're starting construction in August of 2024, and we will roll into the first building A uh, in 2025. So we're way down the pipe in terms of financing. Um, we will build it, and I would suggest that we get together a group of smart people, other developers, affirmed in Chelsea and us, Community Housing Works and others, to think of ideas on how to operate these bathrooms over time on these sites. Um, it is a huge imposition on affordable housing. It works on market rate housing very well uh, because you know they, they have the ability to increase rents. It's mark, market rate luxury, but for affordable housing, it's a huge imposition. And at this point in the game for this particular project, we are, like I said, we're at, we're starting construction in August. Um, and we would have to go back to HCD and make sure that they're okay with this operational cost. We would have to go through legal issues to make sure that it's okay. It would be a nightmare. Um, I'd like to ask her any questions if I, if I can, but we're asking, we support building it out of our own pocket but we can't operate it at this point in time in the game. Um, but we will pledge to work to see how we can find sources to see how we can operate it through state sources, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Um, and then the only last item that is um, under the recommendation for the board is um, we just worked with our um, CEQA attorney to confirm that you know this project um, is a by right ministerial approval, um, but we'd like to, um, file a notice of exemption under CEQA, um, just stating that finding so that th that issue is resolved. All right, thank you. Uh, Clerk, do we have any public comment on this item? We do, we have several. <clears throat> Phone number ending in 3731. Please dial star six to unmute yourself. MTS is in the real estate business with National Community Renaissance of California and also with Malik Info Corporation for Stack and Pack with Palm City Village. National Forest Board is made up of a bunch of people who are lawyers or worked with or for Congress. That means they're some of the best people. And Malik Info has many political affiliations, such as Bike SD, Circulate San Diego, and a local Yimby group. But no matter what, MTS can't say no because they stand to make 10% off this deal with $17 million in state debt dollars for infrastructure, while Malik is getting over $6.3 million from the city of San Diego to build in order to meet those dreaded arena numbers. Sale cookie cutter large box units for families, families without cars. But question, are the units rental, buy, rent to own, or mix? And those future transit patron restrooms within development will turn housing projects into slums real quick. Restrooms are MTS's responsibility, not a developer's. But Merry Christmas. May some of you avoid cold this year. I hear it's unsustainable like MTS's operation. Good luck with that. Thank you. The original DRE, please unmute yourself, though. Yeah, I don't know <clears throat> what you guys think you're doing with putting in these um, bathrooms into these projects like that, because then it takes it out of your hands. Um, and, you know, I've told you about uh, other companies, JC DeSau and Outfront Media or whatever, um, who actually operate and take care of these um, uh, bathrooms, but you can advertise on them. And so you can gain revenue from the advertising, but yet instead you wanna put it into these different projects, which then if they don't do that, are you gonna keep the project from moving forward? Um, it seems a bit ridiculous that you are always passing the buck on to somebody else to take care of the things that you guys are supposed to be taking care of and have been asked to for quite some time and you act like in doing, putting it into a project or enforcing it on somebody else is you guys taking care of it. You need to do your own due diligence and find a company that's gonna take care of the bathrooms, have it separate from people's living quarters and you know, go ahead and make money off of it with Your the advertising. Expired. That concludes public comment, Chair. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, we will now open board discussion on this item beginning with member Ila Rivera. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Karen, for the presentation. And thanks, John, for uh, your comments as well. Um, Karen, I want to recognize the um, significant work you've put into this. Um, I know this is being brought to us after several months of negotiations. Before I, I get into the specifics here, I do want to just kind of step back because 
there's a lot of good that's happening um, here. Um, we're going to have uh, more homes. That's a huge win. Um, and the what we're doing with this, we're, we're making great use of public property. And I think that that's a public land. And I think that should be highlighted and not forgotten. Um, and I understand the need to, to make the project more financially feasible. I understand that there's dynamic conditions in the market and all of that creates a reason to come to us um, to uh, make some changes here. Um, I do though also think it's important to note that um, in exchange for that, I think it's, it, it's there, there's an opportunity to make this in line with other properties that um, we're seeing redeveloped. And so um, what I think we can do um, is I, I trust staff to work with the developer team to continue to work with the developer team um, to figure out a su sustainable path forward. I would, this is a mixed use project, right? There is like a bodega in the building closest to the trolley. Okay. And is there any- And, and childcare. Is the way that, like a corner store? Oh, sorry, like a bodega, it, it, it's like a small grocery corner store. New York, so they call them in New York, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so, and as as the, under the current direction, there's no restriction on the customers of the commercial property being able to utilize the restroom, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so, it, it, what I'd like to do is continue to trust Karen to and continue to trust the developer team to figure out a path forward, to figure out how operations can work. Um, our riders have asked for restrooms time and time again. The MTS board has been incredibly unified on this issue of, of trying to expand restroom access, seeing it as uh, part and parcel to our mission of creating a accessible um, transit system for folks. Um, and I think that we're demonstrating creativity in trying to figure out how to do that. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to uh, move to approve staff's recommendations and uh, trust Karen to, to land the plane here. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Member Ila Rivera. Uh, Member Moreno. Um, thank you for the presentation. And also, I want to thank um, National Core and Malik Infill Development for your dedication in pushing this uh, project forward. Um, thank you, Karen. Uh, and also, uh, Sean. Uh, thank you very much for your advocacy on behalf of the priorities of the Board of Directors. Um, I do support this action today. Um, I understand the, that the development team is concerned about the cost of maintenance of a transit rider restroom, um, even though they have agreed to constructing the restroom as part of the project. Uh, now I fully expect MTS to approach managing and paying for the maintenance of this restroom in a spirit of compromise. Um, but um, I do not hear a desire on behalf of the board or our general counsel to impose so many costs on this development that it cannot be successful. Um, the cost associated with maintaining a restroom, I think are small enough that I'm sure we could work something out uh, with um, all parties. So I'm happy to second this motion. And that concludes my comments, Chair. All right, thank you, uh, Member Bush. Yeah, I, I support as well. Uh, in, in general, though, I do agree with a lot of the comments, even some of the public comments. At the end of the day, bathrooms are a public service. And I think that we as a public agency, when it comes to operations, that we should work towards that. The board direction and what we were trying to do with these um, partnerships was having developers and having these private entities build and maintain. But these issues come up, so let's be flexible, but let's try to work out a, a deal here. And I think um, I think staff can can do that and uh, find creative solutions like the private financing that was mentioned. I think that's a great idea. There's some legislation we can work on that we talked about at the last meeting, our legislative agenda, so the potentially charging for these bathroom stops at cost. So I just ask staff look at all of those options as well and work on the developer team. And this is this is a great project. But let's work out these details some more. All right, we have a motion from member Ilo Rivera, a second from member Moreno. Seeing no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Gonzalez is absent. Chavez? Yes. Donovan is absent. Montgomery Stutz? Yes. 
Goble is absent. Neighbor Gonzalez is absent. Dillard? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Bush? Yes. Frank? Uh, is absent. Um, Marino? Yes. Hilo Rivera? Yes. Gloria is absent. Whitburn? Yes. Hall is absent. The motion passes with eight members voting yes and seven absent. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we're going to waive item 31 in the interest of time. So that wraps up our agenda. Uh, the board's next meeting will be January 18th, 2024. Thank you and happy holidays, everybody.